Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about contributing to open source and Hacktoberfest. Hacktoberfest is a yearly event to get people interested in contributing to open source. Here is their website. Hacktoberfest is giving away free t-shirts or planting trees for people who make contributions to open source projects. Now they have some details about the event and the rules of what counts as a pull request for this event. For example, they don't want you to make a spam pull request that just wastes people's time and it won't get accepted. What they want you to do is to add value to someone's project, such as fixing a bug, or adding a requested feature, or improving the documentation. Adding exclamation points to someone's readme does not improve the documentation and that is considered spam. So don't do that. To contribute to Hacktoberfest projects, you can find a list on the Hacktoberfest website. And also, if you go to the Resources tab, you can find some links to projects that are good for beginners, such as these ones, and some more websites that will help you find issues that should be easy for people starting out with contributing to open source. When you create an account, They'll make a profile for you, and it'll list out contributions you've made to open source projects. Every time you make a pull request, it'll be added to this list, and once they're reviewed, if you've made at least four pull requests, you'll get a free t-shirt. There's also other companies that are giving out swag. You can find this list at hacktoberfestswaglist.com. Now let's get started on making a pull request. GitHub.com slash topics slash Hacktoberfest. This will list repositories that have the Hacktoberfest topic and are participating in the Hacktoberfest event. Now I can go through these and find one that seems interesting or that I'm confident I can contribute to. You can also select a language, for example, JavaScript, and find repositories that are written in JavaScript. Here's an example of a project I might want to contribute to. To contribute, I have to click the fork button, and I have my own version of the repository which I can make changes to, and then request them to be added to the original project. I'm using GitHub Desktop, so I can click open with GitHub Desktop to fork this repository. I can click clone, and now I'm cloning this fork of the project. I'll say it's to contribute to the parent project, now I can open it in Visual Studio Code. Now I can open these files. The change that I want to make involves modifying this page. So you see here we have markdown tips as bold, italics, and strike through. What I want to do is add the markdown tips for links and images. I want to make sure first that no one else has created a pull request, so I'll go to the original repository and check pull requests. There's nothing open right now, which means that no one is requesting this change. If there are issues open, I could go through these and see if there's any features that people are requesting that I could work on. And then I could reply to the issue and then start working on it. This project does not have any open issues, but I can still contribute by making a feature that I think would be useful. So first I need to find where this text is. Okay, so now I can look for the word strike through in my Visual Studio Code editor by pressing Control Shift F. And now I can find that is over here that mentions it. So I can copy this line. I'll do that twice. And I'll say to make a link. So in HTML, I write this as a href equals, and I'll just make it a pound sign so it won't actually go anywhere. I'll word, write the word link. Place the URL in brackets and the link in parentheses. And now I'll put an example. We will put a href equals pound link and put that in square brackets. I'll write http colon slash slash example.com and I can actually make this URL go to example.com and now for images 
it's going to be similar. So I'll say to make an image. So now we need to look for an image. So I can find in images, we have an icon here for GitHub. So I can maybe put that next to the word image. So I can say image source equals images slash icon.png. I'll write the word image next to it. And we'll have to work on the styling a little bit here to make it so it displays in line correctly and doesn't like break up the text. I'll say place an exclamation point. Uh, place the place the link text in brackets in the URL in parentheses. And here place an exclamation point. The alt text in brackets and the URL in parentheses. And then here's the example. You put an exclamation point. Write the word GitHub here. Now this might be a little bit long, so we might want to trim it down before making the pull request. But we can test this out using a live server. All right, so this image is much bigger than we want it to be. So I will modify the styling. Here we can test things out, such as um, width, 20 pixels. We won't, don't want to apply it to every image, just this one. We can give it a class, example icon. In here dot example icon I'm going to shorten this because it's a very long sentence so I will make it just have icon.png and hopefully people can figure out how they're supposed to format it with the full URL class list equals example icon and now in the CSS which is getting loaded It looks like this might be generated by scss dot example icon to have a width 20 pixels. And I can put this directly into the style also. Now let's test this out. So now it looks like if we put slash images slash icon, this will work in the preview. So that might be a good idea to include it in the HTML as well. Now all these parentheses are kind of getting in the way with these when we're using parentheses in the actual markdown. So maybe you want to format this differently, like as code. So we'll try some things out. Let's make a code block. Let's see what this looks like. So yeah, we get red text like this. So let's say we put this in parentheses because it will be a different color. So yeah, let's do that for all of these examples. Now let's look at this one more time. I think we are ready to submit this pull request. So what I'll do is I will go to GitHub Desktop. I can see the changes that I made here. I want to make sure this is on its own branch. So I'll create a new branch called add markdown tips. Create the branch, bring the changes over. I'll click on publish. And now I just need to make a commit. So I can type in a summary added link and image markdown tips. I'll make a commit. Do push origin. And this is on a branch in my forked repository. Now since this is a branch in a forked repository, 
I can create a pull request. If I click create pull request, it'll open up the pull requests for the original project. I'll type up the change that I made in detail and then click create pull request. I can include an image of what it looks like now, which would be helpful. I'll make a screenshot, include it over here. Now I'll say added markdown tips for creating links and images. And I'll say screenshot. And I can preview what this looks like and then create pull request. Now it is up to the maintainer to decide whether this is a valid pull request and whether he wants it to be added to his project. So I'll have to wait for him to decide. And this could take a few minutes or it could take hours or days depending on how busy the maintainer is. Don't expect your pull request to be accepted immediately because people have other things to work on and they'll get to it when they get to it. Don't message them to try to get them to do it faster. That's not going to make them want to work with you. So when you create your pull request, just give it some time. And if they merge it, then it gets added to your profile. And if you do that four times and they all get accepted, you can get a free t-shirt. Now again, when you make a pull request, it should be a change that improves the product. If you're just adding meaningless text to the readme, that does not count as a valid pull request and you won't get any credit for it and you'll just be wasting people's time. So when you make a pull request, make sure that it actually adds a feature that people are requesting or fixes a bug. Or if you can fix a few typos, you can do that as long as the typos that you fix are actually significant and it's not just your preference and grammar rules that the other guy might not approve of. Make sure it's something other people would want to see. To help out some beginners, I've added the Hacktoberfest topic to one of my projects, which is called Countdown. I'll be adding issues that people can work on, and you can go here and see what hasn't been done, and choose something to work on. If it hasn't yet been assigned, you can ask for it to be assigned to you and work on it. I'll try to continue adding issues as they come up, if I think of other projects that can be contributed to, I'll add the Hacktoberfest topic to those as well, and you'll be able to contribute to them for the Hacktoberfest event. I'll try to make these requests easy for beginners, so you don't have to be experienced with programming to fulfill these requests. Contributing to open source should always involve some effort on your part to improve the software. I hope this video is helpful. If you'd like to support this channel, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for my programming tutorials. Bye!